Good morning, everyone. My name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. You know, I'm grateful for the victories that he has given me throughout my whole life. He has just blessed me with so much. And so before we get started, we are going to be in the New Testament. We're going to be in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 today. Um, but before we get started, let's give thanks to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we are we just come to you with just grateful hearts, thankful hearts, Father God, for the blessings that you've given us. Here in Southern California, we are blessed with this wonderful weather, and just we're grateful for that, Father God. But we pray for those across the, the nation on the East Coast. They're starting to get the, the winter storms. And so, Father, I just pray for just their safety and their blessings also, because it's a beautiful after a snowfall. The Father, sometimes it causes havoc on those. So I just pray for those, Father God. And Lord, we lift up just this nation to you um, during our whole issues that we're going through. We put it in your hands, Father God, that you lead and guide and heal all of us, Father God. In your son's name, amen. Amen. So like I said, today we're going to be in the book of 1 Timothy, it's chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. But before I actually read the scripture, there's something in the recovery Bible that I wanted to read that pertains to this. And it pertains to not just us in recovery, to all of us. Because we should be, you know, we, we say, okay, yeah, we talk the talk. Are you walking the walk? Well, now, how about, are you talk in the walk. Okay. So Timothy is admonished and it starts off for, for this um, in verses 11 through 16. So if you look, if you do are going to do a Bible study with this, I would start like at verse 11, even, even just the whole chapter of chapter four. But it says, Timothy is, is admonished to share the good news of the new life in Christ through word and deed. We sometimes forget that the most effective way to share our story of deliverance is to live it. Amen. Nothing we can say, nothing we say can witness as powerfully to God's power as the changes people can see in us and our actions. Some people will always question the legitimacy of what we say, but no one can question the evidence of a transformed life. Amen. When we entrust our lives to God, we can experience the transforming power promised through Jesus Christ. Allowing God to change us is the best way to help others enter the path of recovery. Amen. So, you know, people watch us. People know you're Christian. They're going to watch you. They're going to, they want to catch you messing up. And we're human. We're Christian and we're human. And yeah, we're going to mess up. But, you know, if we, if we fess up, we, you know, we, we call ourselves on it. We own it and move on. Amen. Um, but now it's it's a matter of, yeah, you know, we, we're we're talking the talk and we're walking the walk. We're living that transformation. Now we're trying to tell people about our hope in life, about this transformation that they're seeing. So now we're talking the walk. And so that's what this is all about. So it's First Timothy chapter four, and I'm starting off in chat in uh, verse 14. And this is uh, Paul talking to Timothy. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the, eld when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and others. So Paul is telling him to, to don't neglect your gift. Don't neglect your gift. Same with us. We, you know, and, and I'll use the example as athletes, um, bodybuilders. You know, they have to constantly train to, to keep their bodies in shape, to keep the muscles strong. And, and if they don't, then they begin to lose that. It, it starts to waste away. And so same goes for us with our spiritual gifts that we were given to God. We have to constantly train with them. We need to work with them, read our scripture, um, attend our meetings, go to church, have fellowship. We are, if you're constantly working that, you know, our muscles, our spiritual muscles will stay tuned and strong, you know. So we need to just constantly 
exercising them, I'm just reading what it says here, but failing to use them causes them to waste away from lack of practice and nourishment. Nourishment meaning read your word. It feeds you daily. Read your word. And so think about the gifts that God blessed you with. Are you using them to their full extent? And are you using them daily so that they stay strong, so that you stay strong? Especially in recovery, we need these gifts and we need to work them so that we stay strong, you know, because the enemy is around us constantly. Temptation is around us constantly. That's just, you know, that's the life that we live. Um, and so we need to constantly stay in training so that we're strong to be able to just walk away from these things. So think about those gifts that you were blessed with. And are you using them? Are you putting them to good use? You know, so you want to use them regularly for yourself and to serve God. Amen. And then it talks about um, uh, in verse 16, it says, la, 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 watch your life and doctrine closely. We do need to watch that closely. Yes, like I said, you know, temptations are all around us. So we need to be aware of our surroundings. And, you know, because we can fall into sin very easily and it can destroy us. So we need to be aware and, and be diligent and, and watch around us. And, and also another thing that we need to watch about is what we read, what we're watching, different preachers and, and, and what have you. People have different opinions and they have their own thoughts on scripture. So you want to be careful listening to them. If something doesn't quite sound right, look it up. You're going to find the truth right here in your word. Look it up. If you can't find it, ask them, where, where did you find that? Where do you see that? You know, show that to me. I, you know, I, I you know, so you want to watch it closely and let's see, it says here, wrong beliefs can quickly lead us into sin and heresy. We should be on guard against those who would persuade us that how we live is more important than what we believe. We should keep a close watch on both, staying true to the faith. So, yeah, so how you live is not stronger, is not um, more important than what you believe. You know, faith is is that's that's our that's that's our whole thing as a christian we have faith in god faith in the hope that he brings us amen so we just have to <clears throat> excuse me like paul was telling timothy be on guard be diligent question you know if something doesn't quite sound right question them ask them hey you know where'd you find that in scripture i need to look that up you know okay so let's see what the life recovery devotional has to say to us today so today is step 12 it's day seven and it's called talking the walk when we wake up to realize everything we've gained by following the 12 steps it will be natural to want to share this life-giving message with others amen if we think back to the time before we entered recovery we'll probably recall that we didn't respond well to preaching and yet we also realize that there are people in our lives who our message could help. We are right in our estimation of how vital our message is to their lives. This is why we need to communicate in a way that they will receive. Amen. The Apostle Paul taught Timothy that to get the message across, we need to combine the practice of our beliefs with the telling of them. So he told him, he said, throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the salvation of those who hear you. And again, it's 1 Timothy 4, and that's 15 and 16. When we practice the principles of the 12 step, others will be watching and they will notice a difference. They will notice the changes. And this will open the door for us to be able to tell them our story as well. We must never let ourselves forget that every addict is a precious lost soul whom God loves and wants to rescue. Amen. Somebody looked at us at one time or another and knew that we were a precious lost soul that God wants to rescue. And they sent, and God sent that person to you. If someone among you wanders away, 
Whoever brings the sinner back will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. That's in James 5, 19 and 20. So we can never forget that that lost soul, that, that, that addict out there, he's a precious child of God, the same as you are. Amen. We need to look at him that way. So we just need to remember, you know, we, we have these spiritual gifts that God blessed us with. And now that we've, we've been in our recovery and, and working these steps and what have you, God wants us now to go out and, and, and share it with others. Just like what the roadmap tells us. He gave me total victory in my life. And now I have the power to share the good news with others. Amen. So let's share the, let's, let's share the word with others. Amen. So we're, we're, we're talking the talk, we're walking the walk, and now let's talk the walk so people know why we have that transformation in our lives. God bless you guys. Have a great day today.